Okay, hello everybody and welcome. So this time we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, I was playing a draft, but I couldn't record sound. So I'm going to try to add the sound now by uh, replaying the recorded video with uh, my commentary laid over top. So the, the actual video is about an hour long. Maybe we can cut it down to uh, something shorter by fast forwarding through some parts that are not too interesting. My job is to kind of uh, give you the gist of the videos where the draft goes 3.0 so that you can you know, pick up some uh, things that may be useful for you and use that in, in your gameplay as well. All right, so pack one, pick one. I'm pretty sure here I'm looking at uh, Davriel and Soul Diviner as the only two viable cards. I don't like Wonder Strike because it's white and it's not a good first pick. So I'm pretty sure we're gonna, yeah, we just take Davriel here. It's a solid pick one, uh, pack one. And for pick two, pretty sure we just take uh, Angrath uh, because the upside on Angrath is uh, bigger than uh, Death Sprout plus Death Sprout is two colors, whereas Angrath keeps us in black. So uh, probably uh, on paper in a vacuum, uh, Death Sprout is stronger, but uh, I think they're quite close. Angrath can do stupid things and just win games out of the blue, as, as we'll see in a, in a bit. Uh, and uh, it's it's very strong. I imagine I took Kellis Dismissal here because I value that card higher than uh, Hardfire. Yep. I think I ultimately end up being like a black red sacrifice deck, which is not a common not a co not an archetype that you run across commonly. It doesn't have too much support. There's like one uncommon for it with Mayhem Devil and some synergy with like uh, the one drop. Uh, yeah, we took Tibble Trager Jar and Clear clear Jar. But it's, it's interesting to play archetypes that are not really uh, well represented or that you don't really come across too often. Spells is something that you come, up or, uh, come across a lot. Uh, green, blue, black, blue, and uh, green, white decks you come across often, but you don't see... Uh, black red. So there we took Tammy as Epiphany as the strongest card. And here I think this is going to be one of the first three Under the God Pharaohs that I end up playing. Card is very powerful uh, and it's underrated. Like it's the red uh, Toll of the Invasion. And just as Toll of the Invasion is underrated, Under the God Pharaohs is underrated. Of course, uh, Toll of the Invasion is a little bit more powerful in a vacuum, but Under the God Pharaoh. You could play easily two or even three of, and it's a reason to have 17 lands even in, in a low curve deck. So, Vampire Opportunist from that uh, deck, uh, from that pick. And, and here I'm very happy I took Grim Initiate over Wonder Strike. This is like an important decision because you can make an argument that, you know, White is open with Wonder Strike still being in the pack, and it's not so bad that it should wheel. I mean, somebody, should have, somebody could have picked it up. But, you know, this little red one drop. It will do a lot of work over the course of the draft. Also, I didn't feel that, uh, you know, I didn't see that there were a lot of good white cards. It may be just the way that the packs broke up, but uh, yeah, red red seems to be uh, a color I wanna be in with Angrath, Rager, and Jaya. And Curious Dembreaker is fine, even as a top end splash, as long as you have good fixing. When you have Angrath and Davriel and uh, armies to proliferate onto. So now I take the Oncrop Invader for the combo with uh, Grim Initiate. Not really a combo, but it's just cheap. You know, Grim Initiate in that case uh, can still impact the board later on as something you can sack to Oncrop Invader uh, for value. Uh, it's, it's more of a threat of activation thing than, than the actual sacrifice effect, but uh, with, with uh, a Grim Initiate on the board, you don't feel bad sacrificing. Uh, sacrificing things to Oncrop Invader. So here I'm taking Ral's Outburst because I'm, you know, I'm still trying to go uh, red blue spells because it's the best archetype in my opinion. Uh, but I'm not completely off the the black red plan either. And here I think I take uh, Thunder Drake over Mana Geode. Actually, I don't remember what I took here. Oh yeah, I opened a Bantu, I almost missed that, I'm sorry. Pack one, pack two, pick one, we got a Bantu. So this is a, main, this is a major reason 
I was talking too much and got distracted. So Bonta was it was a major reason why I'm kind of moving away from uh, moving away from blue more towards the 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 black rat core of the deck. And Silence of Bristable is not really a, a reasonable playable. Uh, if you get it like very very late, you can play it, but just because it's a rare doesn't mean it's good. Even if it's a rare that's clearly not for constructed, it doesn't mean that it's for limited. So easy second Jaya makes all your creatures, gives all your creatures plus one plus zero. And here I think I take a third ogre or just a second honor the god pharaoh. I'm not sure. I wouldn't be surprised if I took second honor the god pharaoh here. I know I had three of them ultimately, which was one of the reasons that really helped me 3-0. I think I'm looking and seeing that my, my oh no, I took third ogre. Okay, I, then I think I, I wheeled under the uh, under the god pharaoh. Okay, in retrospect, it was the right pick because I still I still went three and zero with this deck. Uh, Heartfire, easy pick. Uh, I think I took Sarkan's Catharsis. There there are a couple of cards in this format that are de that are designed to deliver a lot of damage in one turn. Uh, White, for example, has the two mana uncommon that untaps your creatures and gives flyers plus two plus two. You could use that as a card that helps you race and just get the last few points of damage in. And Sarkin's Catharsis uh, curves well into Ongrath because Ongrath comes down, gives all your creature menace, gives you an attack that your opponents can't easily block, especially if you're racing and they've been attacking you as well. Second, third ogre there. And again, now I'm seeing that I could basically start cutting the, the blue cards. Even though I have some good ones with Cal's Dismissal, Ral's Outburst, I'm gravitating more towards uh, the red-black sacrifice theme and solidifying it with late picks like uh, Crunch Wrangler, Bond of Passion, which I think I did end up playing a couple of matches, but I kept sideboarding that in and out depending on what I was up against. Uh, Mana Geode ended up being like a wasted pick because I ended up not needing to splash anything. When you're going into like... Uh, pack three with so many with so many playables, you could already kind of see that you don't really need your your third color. And Bantu, uh, that De Devriel and Bantu basically uh, account for the decision here to go black instead of blue. It's you know only if we would have opened something like Tefnet in pack three uh, could we consider going off black and. Red's definitely getting played at this point because that's where most of my val my playables are. And just solid cards like Turret Ogres, uh, Jaya, and Tibble's Rager. Heartwarming is a is a playable card not only in uh, the the red white Boros archetype, but in, in there's there's pl plenty of places you could splash this card just to cycle cards later. So here it's pretty easy, Raska. No need to go crazy with, uh, you know, double white or uh, gleaming overseer. Raska's awesome. Widespread brutality was one of the best things we could have been passed here, and this card definitely uh, had a major role ultimately in the outcome of the draft. Yeah, Samet Spirit's not really what you want to be playing. I could I'd, I'd sooner play this card in a. a Boros deck. So Mayhem, I'm looking at Mayhem Devil here, and I do have a couple of sacrifice outlets like uh, Oncrop Invader, for example. And I think that's... Uh, and and uh, God Eternal Bantu. So Mayhem Devil can just be sick with God Eternal Bantu. Imagine you, you put Bantu down, sacrifice like a small creature in three lands, you could deal four to anything. So Mayhem Devil and Bantu are made for each other, and they really shine in, uh, in this archetype. Yeah, easy hard fire. Hard as strong as uh, under the Godfire is hard fire is just stronger. And again, it's perfect for this type of deck. Also combos and mayhem devil. Grim initiate is good fodder for it, plus the tokens from under the God Pharaoh. And you could even sacrifice uh, the planeswalkers when they're down to an irrelevant amount of loyalty. I think I take Manticore over the second Oncrop Invader. Oncrop Invaders are not good in pairs. I think one one of is more than good enough for a typical rad black sacrifice deck. So finishing up with the picks here, I think I take uh, maybe the colorless card. Oh no, I take the two drop goblins. Yeah, just in case I need a lower curve in some matchups, it could be uh, 
disappointing last, you know, last 23rd card in your deck. I probably just hate draft Rails Outburst, already knowing that I'm not going to play it, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't want anyone else to have it if it's going so late. By the way, one thing I should say about this draft, and I noticed this uh, only now, I'm not sure, but if you look at um, the drafter, let me pause this for a second. Yeah, it took Ras a second, Raska's finisher. So if you look at the, at the list of drafters and you look at the top, top the, the second guy on the right-hand side, there's a vertical red, red bar, meaning that he's disconnected. So when you have a situation when one of the, one of the eight players is auto-picking cards, it means that your deck is going to be stronger on average because you're going to be you're going to be past cards that you normally wouldn't be past. So I think this contributed to the success of the deck. And the reason I'm pointing this out is, you know, just because just because you three, you know, uh, doesn't mean that you know you're you're doing everything right. There's there's always factors to consider, and there's always things you could you could have done differently. And maybe during when we go to the gameplay, we might even see some things that we could have done better. Uh, and it, it, we should definitely take note of the fact that this is not a typical deck, and and the, and there's a lot of strong cards that you usually you usually don't end up with uh, uh, in a deck like this. And one of the reasons is because uh, a guy, I mean, he was far enough from me, but it doesn't matter. Like when you have you know one eighth or twelve percent, twelve and a half percent of the people not participating uh, and drafting random cars, you're going to have a significantly better than average deck, even if you just end up with two extra uncommons that you normally wouldn't have over the course of the draft. It could be, it could be very strong. Of course it's, you know, sucks for him because he's disconnected. Not, not sure what happened, but it happens every now and then you could have an internet connection problem or whatever, or MTGO can freeze as it's known to do. Uh, probably take another Manticore, but I end up not running either one of them because I'm about to get my second and third honor the God Pharaoh. And I ended up opting for a very low curve uh, for a very low curve deck that uh, didn't go past five. Yep, there's the wield onto the God Pharaoh. So I'm going to take it and make some room for it. I don't remember exactly what I cut, but probably, probably Manticore is the cut right now. And Goblin Assailant. Yeah, I think those are the cuts. So Goblin Assailant went first. And now with the other onto the God Pharaoh, I moved it to the sideboard initially, but eventually I ended up playing it. I think the sweet spot is two. If your deck is good, you could have three. Like with the reason why they get better uh, with this deck is because with cards like Widespread Brutality and Bantu, they let you find them quicker. Uh, they're even better if you have Cyclops Spiromancer because you could throw spells in your graveyard for value later. Uh, or if you have Aid the Fallen, you could just toss a Planeswalker that you can't cast and then uh, get him back along with a creature. Uh, so I'll fast forward to deck building here to save some time. Yeah, so I already mentioned that uh, I ended up running three Honor the God Pharaohs. Uh, Grim Initiate, I knew right away, would do a lot of work with this very low curve. Uh, with double hard fire, you really want to have a Grim Initiate uh, in your deck. So even if I didn't have this on Crop Invader I would st and uh, Widespread Brutality, which, you know, can kill it and then amass... Uh, uh, it would you you amass two and you end up with a three three and then you deal three damage to everything else, so grim initiate and widespread vitality is kind of a combo on its own. So this was the uh, final version. Highlights of the deck are uh, double hardfire Tibble Trager, Davriel, triple honor the God Pharaoh Mayhem Devil, obviously Raska, obviously Angrath, widespread vitality, and then double Jaya and Bantu. So a lot of good cards, just very high raw power level for a deck like this. And I think in the, during the game, you might even see some blatant mistakes that were made uh, that, that led to a pretty, pretty easy 3-0 regardless. So I think we're going to jump in here to uh, match one.
So uh, opponent, yeah, mulligan to four here. Uh, I think I can fast forward because, you know, when, you, when your opponent mulls to four, it's really not even not even a contest. Yeah, so I, I had a very developed board. He, pl he played a main deck, uh, Ravnica at War, which exiled uh, my Ongrath and Mayhem Devil, still left me with three power on the board, and then I just put Bonta down while he was tapped out, and it was game over. I think I sacked two lands and a Grim Initiate, and uh, there's no way that you could have come back from this. And honestly, uh, yeah, it was just no contest. Not only was he mana screwed, like he didn't even he didn't even have any playables. Looked like he was playing three colors. Maybe he had a problem with fixing. He could be holding like the double black green uh, removal spell in his hand that he can't cast. Death Bloom. And then, yeah, once you see Bantu, five, six menace, it doesn't make sense to continue. <laughs> yeah, two lands and Grimanitiate, draw three cards. Amass one, making the zombie army a three, three. And now I just have so many options. So opponent plays Storov. Yeah, this is the double black card that he couldn't cast until he put down the second swamp. Uh, yeah, so I could have done this after attacks because Bantu gets in unblocked anyway. There is no one mana green flash creature in this format, so he's impossible to block. So this puts OP down to four and then down to two with the third ogre next turn. And I think he's just gonna resign or concede. Right now. Ah, okay, not yet, not yet. Yeah, so he plays this. So, but he's still dead. <laughs> so there's really no point in... I, I, I think I just attack with everything here because it's lethal on board without having to play anything else. Maybe he was trying to block Bantu, not realizing he's menace. Sometimes players do that. But... It was pretty pretty quick, and then I think he just conceded. Yeah, he didn't even play the second round. Uh, yeah, it was just he he dropped, I guess, from the league. I think the only way to do that in between sideboarding is to drop from the league. I'm not even sure you can concede. So he must he decided that he doesn't want to continue. It's possible that uh, sometimes one thing I noticed that's happening with the uh, MTGO because they're, some of the players moved over to Arena and they don't have enough what I call player liquidity, which is they don't, there's not enough active players to match exactly those that have like one loss, one win, or two wins, uh, you know, two wins going into the finals. And you don't always end up playing somebody with the same record as you, which is a little frustrating. So what I do in that case is sometimes, you know, if, if I'm uh, already like uh, – 2 doesn't happen often, thankfully. But if I'm already 0-2 and, and I know that I'm not, you know, I'm not going to win anything. If I'm playing somebody, I ask, you know, what's your record? Because if they're not, if they're also not 0-2, if they're, let's say it's their first match, uh, I'll just concede even if I'm winning because it's a nice thing, you know, you give somebody a free win, then they might get some extra boosters and stuff. It's just a nice courtesy thing to do. I'm sure MTGO is not happy about it, but uh, one thing that you can do if you want to make, make some friends uh, is 
if you're up against somebody and you know that you already lost two matches and this is the third match where you're playing kind of just for fun but not for uh, uh, any boosters or, or any uh, QP, uh, PQ points, PTQ points or anything like that, you know, just ask, you know, what's, what's your record? And, uh, you know, I, I found out because some, some nice players were asking me and, uh, you know, they, they, I got a couple of freebies out of it. So it was a nice gesture on their part. And I figured, you know, I could do the same thing. So here I play Rask instead of Angrath because I'd rather trade a Death Touch creature uh, with a Naga Eternal. And uh, I don't... Uh, Yeah, and if I amass with Ongrad, then I would have one body with a 3-3 zombie army. So here I have two bodies and I'm less susceptible to removal. So I still, I think he just attacks with the Sky Theater Strix to hit Raska for one. Ah, okay. He attacks with both, immediately trade. I trade half a four drop for a three drop any day. So now I just make another one. And I think I slam Bantu right away. Yeah, because there's no two mana counter spell. No reason to sandbag him. And I think I leave the zombie army. I just sack a forest and a swamp. If I'm not, if my memory serves me correctly. Ah, two swamps. Yeah, I sack two swamps because widespread brutality is double red. And this draws me a land in Giant, which is fine. And then I just pass. Totally lost actually did quite a bit of damage. Uh, surprisingly, it was, it was very effective with uh, forcing me to put Bonto on top after I've sacked land. So now I can't cast them at least for two turns which is an interesting way of dealing with uh, Bantu. So yeah, my, my th approach here is even though I'm trading a Death Toucher for a one, two, I know that given the strength of my hand, I'm gonna lose the, uh, I'm gonna win the long game as long as I keep my, my life total high. So here I decide to use widespread brutality right away just to stop taking damage. I could have set up for a bigger turn, but honestly I don't need to because I, I'm guaranteed to get three points of damage here unless my opponent wants to chum block. And then I have uh, just plenty of gas in my hand. Mm -hmm. So here I think I do play Angrath, a mass army uh, to give it uh, menace to kill Ashiok forcing like a double double block chomp, chomp which would be pretty, pretty bad. So yeah, it was like a quick decision. I didn't even need to think about it because the one way, I'd, like Ashiok is a way for me to lose. Even if he just mills eight, if this game somehow drags out with bounce and whatever, unlikely, again, with Bantu in my hand, unlikely that it would drag out for, you know, 12, 12 more turns or whatever, 16 more turns. But I wanted the uh, Ashiok dead. So first, my opponent thought about double double blocking just to chump. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, he did. Yeah, I, I was very I was very confused here. This is not this is a very strange uh, move because you're losing kind of like a card and a half just to mill me for four more. It didn't really seem very good, uh, and strange that he you know. Just, uh, it's strange that he played this card on his turn because it's an instant. I probably would have just, you know, kept up mana. Maybe that would have uh, changed, the, you know, changed my thought process for attacks. It probably wouldn't have, but it was just strange. Uh, it's strange play order from, from my opponent. Yeah, so I, I play Zombie Army, and I'm pretty sure I amass again and play Bantu, sacking two more lands and Angrath. 
so this makes it this makes the army a seven seven and then yeah there's no reason to sit on Angrath while opponent is tapped tapped out so it's not uh and again I, yeah it's just like one land and Angrath because I have Jaya uh and turd ogre I don't really want to go to three lands on board. Ah, sorry, I just sacked well, Interesting. Uh, maybe in retrospect, I guess it's still right because with uh, Jaya being a five drop, maybe I wanted to play her next turn, but I think maybe I could have I could have sacked one more land to draw one more card. I think maybe that was uh, a wrong, not, not an not a play that maximizes EV expected value. In retrospect, I probably would have sacked like a swamp and, and gone to three lands. So I think, yeah, just, just a pass here. And now I really can start putting the pressure down So attack with 12 power worth of menace. I think he double blocks Bantu. It's his best option. And then I kill Ashiok Skulker, leaving him with a 3-3. Three, three. So good trade for him, but again, Bantu is just going to come back. I think, though, my opponent died before Bantu ever comes back. Okay, fairly straightforward. And then I don't think I play Jaya. I think I play Turd Ogre. Yeah, just to be mana efficient. And then next turn, I'm seeing that I can double spell with uh, Mayhem Devil and Raska's Finisher. Also, by playing Togut Turd Ogre now, uh, I ping my opponent for two more, taking him down to eight. And I'm threatening lethal on board. Uh, or even if just zombie army gets through lethal with Jaya. So he needs to play three blockers here or play a blocker and bounce something to live. And I don't think he was able of doing that. Yeah, he just played Toll of the Invasion, which is not going to cut it. That doesn't create a body that's just going to make the army bigger, which is not going to stop menace. And I think he just probably conceded. Maybe he plays another totally lost here, I think. Got to keep trying to tap the, the action buttons, forgetting that this is a recorded video. It's not, not a live draft. Okay, so, so just uh, no concession, but a victory. And I think I, I like snaps resubmitted the deck because we didn't see anything uh, threatening or anything that we needed to build a game plan around. Yeah, so this is a keep with uh, Table Trader, Widespread Vitality. Okay, pretty straightforward. I probably fast forward a little bit. Uh, so... Okay, let me rewind just a little bit. Yeah, so opponent stuck on three on two lands here. I think this is also a quick match. The only challenge came from the finals, in the finals, I think, because uh, game one opponent conceded just without even going to the second match. Here opponent stuck on two lands. I could probably just fast forward this. Uh, it's, I mean, games like this are just not indicative of typical deck performance. Yeah, this was interesting. So I tossed widespread brutality because I figured I have such a big board state right now and my opponent's at 10 already that I can just finish him off with hard fire and uh, what do you call it? Uh, vengeful uh, vampire opportunist, yes. So this is the finals now. 
great opening hand. And immediately I'm thinking, all right, I have removal. I have, I have a board wipe with uh, widespread brutality. So there's no reason for me to run out uh, vampire opportunist to something that's just going to die. And I'm seeing, you know, uh, a white blue deck, which uh, typically has like toughness, no more than three. And now that I drew honor the God Pharaoh, uh, you know, immediately you're trying to build the widespread brutality honor the God Pharaoh combo where you amass one, then two, then deal three to everything on board on turn four. So that's a pretty sweet deal. And I don't, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to just play under the God Pharaoh next turn, knowing that I'm continuing to take damage. And I dished, I guess, opportunist. Yeah, opportunist is reasonable to ditch there. There's no reason to. It is a win condition, but it's super slow. It's kind of like the uh, the two three green bear that lets you look at the top card of your library for four mana, and if it's a creature card, you can put it into your hand. It's in that type of mana sink, game winning. Uh, you know, it's in that it's in that category of late game mana sink, sink win condition. But hopefully, you know we can win before then so i had a, i had an interesting decision to make here i could have sat on widespread brutality for one more turn and uh, but I, I saw that he has mana up and if he was playing the no return no return doesn't counter widespread brutality but it does counter a creature or planeswalker so this is one of the reasons why i decided not to be greedy and just get my three for one now three for one meaning i kill two creatures and i make my thing bigger so that's uh that's a legitimate that's a legitimate play. Mobilized district is something I need to keep an eye on. So also should should worth noting, I'm behind on life here. So there was also an argument for not attacking, but I think the best uh, defense is offense, especially in uh, Magic Limited. So my my goal is to try to keep trading damage because remember i have uh, sarkin's catharsis in my deck which deals five to the face so this creates an incentive to continue uh attacking even though i risk taking five in the crack back if he has removal and i'm trading like a full three drop for half a five drop which not is not not a very good rate At some point, opponent is going to start activating Mobilized District. Okay, he starts doing it now. Uh, yeah, good attack. I mean, he attacks for eight with everything. And I think I trade for the land to deprive a mana. Uh, I don't actually remember what I blocked. Let's see what I blocked. Okay, so I wanted to eliminate the flying, I guess, more than I wanted to deny him. Uh, access to one more mana. But yeah, but he had a combat trick here anyway, so I wouldn't have been able to kill either one of those creatures with the Divine Arrow. So now I can double spell. I can go like Raska and Oncrop Invader. Yeah, so make him discard down to his last card. Onto God Pharaoh's second one. Discarding Swamp. Yeah, it's just so good. It helps you rip through your deck. It's like, it's not it's not quite a Tamiyo's Epiphany. Tamiyo's Epiphany is like an archetypal blue card. Scry three, draw two. That's insane. But for one mana less, in a red-black deck or a red-blue deck, Onto the God Pharaoh just does so much work. So I let my Planeswalker die here. 
there's no way I can block because the army token has flying. And now I'm pausing to think because I have a couple of options, but I opt to keep attacking. Yeah, if he has to block it, he has to double block with uh, Mobilized District and Eternal Skylord. Okay, no blocks. I'm gonna play yeah, Mayhem Devil and Oncrop Invader, leaving Raska for when I can actually maybe snipe something with uh, damage or incidental damage dealt or even uh, like a point of damage off Tybalt. I'm pretty sure Raska says whenever it was dealt damage, not whenever it was dealt combat damage. So direct damage also counts. I think we kind of stared for a while at each other here. Nothing exciting. Again, makes it 3 3. Uh, for the trade, I think, I think I may have been playing around something. I don't remember what exactly. One card and two mana, uh, three mana, sorry. Uh, opponent passes. And I should probably play out Tibble's Rager pre-attack to threaten lethal with Oncrop Invader and Zombie Army. I don't think I did that, though. I think I just attacked, which was wrong. Yeah, but I think uh, yeah, pr pretty pretty straightforward attack here. I could fast forward a little bit. Yeah, so then opponent uh, passed the turn. Double Larun Enforcer. And I think it just passes keeping up Mobilized District now. Pretty exciting. Let's fast forward a little bit. Yeah, so this gives all my creature plus uh, creatures plus one plus zero. Even if you tap something down, I can still get in for at least uh, three points of damage. I'm not sure what he's casting here. Maybe it's a counter spell. Ah, Dovid's Veto. Okay, yeah. Otherwise, uh, I had pretty much lethal with Jaya because I can I could have sacked uh, on Crop Invader to kill Tybalt's Rager either during combat on blocks or after combat to deal an extra point of damage to OP. And uh, that guarantees, that would have guaranteed that at least three points of damage would have gotten through probably off Raska, putting my opponent down to one. I'm just uh, reviewing, making sure I'm not missing anything. He's got zero cards in hand, so he can't activate Mobilize District. He can't Mobilize Law Rune Enforcer, so it's a fairly clean attack. And then uh, this gets him down to one. And then I think I just tack, sack Tibble Drager. 
to deal that one extra point of damage after he dies. Yep, very Rakdos way of winning. Okay, on sideboarding, I don't remember if I changed anything. Maybe I played a Bond of Passion this match. You know what? I haven't. I, I'm sorry. I was make, I made a mistake. I said that we kept bringing uh, Bond of Passion in and out. Looks like I haven't played it once, and I may be. I may be thinking about another draft. So I'm looking at Blind Blast maybe to see if they they could be good against OP. I think I just shipped it back as is without making any changes. Or maybe I added like Sarkin's Catharsis. No, just sending it back. Very similar to uh, round one, instead of trusted, instead of Lauren Enforcer, he had uh, the two two. A martyr for the cause. So now hard fire becomes a deal five instead of deal four, since it requires you to sack a creature. Uh, Mayhem Devil gives it that extra point of damage. Yeah, so he attacked, got in for two damage with the Pegasus and then played another Pegasus. This is my turn. Uh, I also press the advantage by attacking. He could double block here and then I would just kill probably the Pegasus Courser. And in this case, I'm trading for a 3-3 three, a three, three, for a 3-3, three, three, so it's not anything criminal. Yeah, I mean, Honor the Godfather is just so good. Look at the scry, scry, amass. Yeah, unfortunately, I can't play another land here, so all I could do is pass and take some damage on the crackback. But I have Heartfire and Removal in hand, which means that if I get another land, I could just sack the Zombie talk uh, token and get in for five off Burning Prophet plus, uh, with plus one plus zero from the instant. And Mayhem Devil just doing his thing. Like for our opponent's deck, the two mana white untap all creatures of flying give them plus two plus. Sorry, untap all creatures and then if they have flying give them plus two plus two would, would be perfect for his deck. He's playing just, you know, 75% flyers right now. Okay, maybe that's not indica indicative of the whole deck, but, uh, you know, the flyers are very impressive in this format. They, they are incredibly pesky to deal with. Yeah, so I attack with zombie army kind of beating the block, but but hoping maybe my opponent's not going to notice and just let through an extra point of damage. Instead, he decides to block with the elite guard mage and then they hard fire probably one of the two trusted Pegasus. I don't remember exactly. Uh, or I could just Raskus finisher. Yeah, this is even better because then I, keep, I can keep up hard fire on uh, my opponent's turn. And I develop the board. The opponent plays uh, Nahiri and kills the Mayhem Devil. So the stack triggers Resolve, Ice Cry, Ranging Crotch, Crunch. For some reason, I bought. I guess I bought them because I'm looking for answers to flyers. As it is, I'm I'm losing the race, and I need. I felt like I needed to change something, and the best way to do it is to kill Trusted Pegasus. Because again, my my board state is a bit precarious because I have 
two planeswalkers. Jaya can kill Trusted Pegasus, but he can just make a mobilized district. Uh, so this was a difficult spot for me. Okay, gets passed to me. Uh, I play Jaya and I probably minus her immediately to kill Trusted Pegasus. And then Burning Prophet attacks Nahiri and finish her uh, attacks player. Ah, uh, after he blocks one of the two, I guess Raska's finisher. And yeah, that's, key, that's staying on top for sure. With two lands in hand and five on the board, I don't really need lands anymore. And Nahiri, uh, ah, okay, I hit, I killed Nahiri with Jaya, or not. I killed, no, I killed Trusted Pegasus with Jaya. Ah, oh, never mind. Okay, so opponent, uh, I don't remember what he did. I think he just maybe activated, yeah. So he activated uh, Mobilized District, kills, killed Jaya, and then he didn't attack with Larun Enforcer because Mobilized District has Vigilance and it remains a land that you could tap for Colorless to tap one of my creatures on attacks with Larun Enforcer. Uh, but my opponent knows that it's probably going to die to Jaya at this point. So I could still do Honor the God Pharaohs because... Ah, sorry, never mind. Jaya's already dead. He's not gonna, uh, Lauren Enforcer is not gonna die to Jaya. Never mind. So all we could do is cast uh, Lauren Enforcers, get our 1 1 a mass, and ping in, and jump in for 2 damage. Rask is a good draw, Davriel is a good draw. Grab that to the bottom. And start minusing him right away to dismantle OP's hand. By the way, if you watch these videos to improve your drafts, I highly recommend you watch it like 1.5 speed or at least 1.25 speed. You get the same amount of information in 25 to 50% less time. Uh, and you have time to do other things. So even though I'm behind on life here, uh, I know that my opponent is going to attack Davriel. So I'm, I'm expecting that he's going to just uh, mobilize his district, swing in for Davriel, and I have the choice of just chumping it if he does that. That way I get one more discard off Davriel, and if Larwin Enforcer attacks as well, then I can crack back for five uh, on the next turn. And Raska will put put a hold on attacks. So I think my, my goal here is to protect Davriel because discarding one of my opponent's last three cards is probably stronger than having just a random 1-1 one, one on board. Ah, maybe even two cards, sorry. Again, I don't remember if he attacked with Law Enforcer. I don't think he did. So yeah, he just attacks with Mobilized District and I insta-chump. Because I have another Honor the Godfire, I'll just get another token to keep chumping. So I'm drawing cards and making my opponent this card while taking no damage. Um, and, you know, cards like Raska and Honor the Godfire just give you inevit inevitability because they just, they let you draw a, draw a ridiculous amount of cards. And again, as long as I can get my opponent to within hard fire range or hard fire plus like... Uh, Pyrohelix, you know, you could deal four, five, seven damage just with spells alone. It's it's something that should you should always keep in mind uh, as a possible win con for these types of decks. So yeah, immediately uh, make that snap chum block, and I'm already I already have my mouse over Davriel to minus at the beginning of my opponent's turn, or sorry, the beginning of my turn, and. I'm gonna have, if I don't draw land, I'm gonna have a choice of going onto the Godfire to find a land to play Raska. Uh, here, I'm not sure what happened. I guess 
I must have paused the video for a little bit. Sometimes this happens, but it looks like I played Honor the God Pharaoh. Yeah, I did. So I played Honor the God Pharaoh, found the land, played a land, played Raska, minus Raska. And this is our opponent's turn where he's playing Skylord and Zombie Army. Uh, I think he bounced one of his own things. I don't remember what exactly. Cal is this missile. Why is Castle Cal is? Wait a second. What did he bounce? I'm confused. Oh, he bounced. Oh, he killed my uh, one one death toucher, so that he can attack with Eternal Skylord and uh, kill Raska. So I think I do chump here with zombie army because, it, because again, uh, uh, he's just, he just wants to kill Davriel. Yeah, in this case, I let, it, I let this happen because extra two points of, from Davriel are, would be nice, but I don't think it's, uh, it's needed because I have a better board state. Uh, with you know f and and action in hand with uh, Tibble Trader and Invader. So probably just takes this goes to seven. Yep, and then I play out my hand, being careful to cast uh, to make sure I have enough red mana. And now this is a lot of pressure because even on crop invader is threatening lethal on his own, so he must be blocked. A couple of minutes left before we end. But again, just looking back at this, uh, power level of the deck was very high and it partially had to do with the fact that one of the people at the draft table was not drafting. That helps everyone else whenever that happens. Yeah, so no likely no attacks, nothing from OP. Uh, he's attacking with zombie army. Yeah, so this is a mistake. I don't remember exactly what he played after this, but this attack, uh, regardless of whether he's killing Vraska or trying to deal three to me, it's, it's not good. Uh, he should kind of protect his life total because I have so much power on board, and here I top deck Ongrath, uh, and this just basically puts the game away. Because again, I can also sack Tibble's Rager to do a point of damage. And if I'm not mistaken, I think the last card in my opponent's hand is, uh, is a Divine Arrow, which is still not going to be enough to let him survive. So he tried to double block to minimize the damage, but uh, he knew that I could play around it by just sacking Tibble's Rager to ping for one, but he didn't really have a choice. So what he does here is he taps something down. I think he taps down uh, Raska's finisher or Oncrop Invader, one of those two. Yeah, he taps Oncrop Invader, mobilizes his, mobilizes his district. And then he has, still has two mana and a card in hand. So very mana efficient uh, setup from my opponent. Taps something, gets an extra blocker. But here he's going to pay for having attack last turn because that attack with the flying zombie army, it was very greedy. Because even with this divine arrow uh, on Raska's finisher or one of the three power creatures, I still get enough damage in to where after damage, I can sack Tibble's Rager and just ping him for one for the last point of damage. So I think he thinks for a long time here. We can fast forward through some of this. He's still thinking. So then he puts, yeah, then he puts Mobilize District. Uh, and the Skylord Eternal or Eternal Skylord. Uh, yeah, so I pump, 
oh, sorry, let me rewind. So we're here. He's got his, uh, he's about to tap out for his last card. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is going to target Raska's finisher or the 3-3 three, three menace. Ah, okay, never mind. It's targeting a Tibble Trader. So in this case, I don't even need to sack it because uh, it's just going to ping for one. It's going to ping LP for one when it dies. And anyway, even without that, it's still seven points of damage from Raska, Zombie, Army, and Assassin. It was pretty clear. I don't know why it took my opponent so much time to kind of realize that uh, he's dead on board but this was the draft uh it was fun i like these red black decks and uh, we got the sweet three you know hope you enjoyed that see you next time